that was such a different philosophy from probably every other piece of enterprise software that's ever been made, right? Well, no, uh, it, it's, it's definitely the philosophy of the most successful ones. Like we're not inventing that. We're, we're remembering that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you look at how did Windows grow, right? They were developers first, right? And they really respected that. And they did a remarkable job at galvanizing that community. I would say that we're at the early stages of that, but we built the architecture for that purpose. Right. Talk to me about artificial intelligence, because in the last six months, a lot of people want to talk about that. It's interesting that you just mentioned open source, because you know we've even heard from the big techs, either through leaked pieces or other pieces, that they're not even sure if they can compete with the open source movement and all the things going on with AI. You were on stage recently and you said, there is no AI without a UI, and I thought that was kind of interesting. And so how how are you going to incorporate AI into Vatim and and also, what do you think of this technology? I mean, you've been around for a long time, so. Um, I have been around for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for and noticing. You've seen so, so many waves in technology, you know? <laughs> yeah, I have. So I'm just curious from your uh, perspective. Well, I, could, yeah. I can say I've been around for a long time and I've, I've seen a lot, but I've never seen anything like this. I've, I thought I was beyond excited when the internet had a hypertext layer. I remember my brother called me and said, hey, this kid at the, University of Illinois, you know, Mark Andreessen just did this thing called Mosaic and you have this, this browser that you can now put on top of this thing. I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. And it is, what a massive leap. But this is beyond anything that I've ever seen. We are, of course, incorporating this. It'd be like saying, are you gonna use electricity? Like if, if you must use this technology and apply it to the benefit of your goals, or you won't be in business. Uh, there'll be two types of companies, the companies that use it and the companies that no longer exist, right? Yes, there's dangers, there's, there's real constraints that we have to put around where this might go. And I'm a big proponent of taking that seriously, but not slowing down because you, one, you can't, and two, the, the power of what it might bring is, is extraordinary. So. In our world, um, as, as you pointed out, you, it, it, we only care about technology to the extent that you can use it, right? You can see our philosophy around the wallet or around websites now come alive. They're not meant for people to um, have to figure out how to use. AI is really going to explode when it just becomes part of our lives and disappears into the background and really becomes a, gives us superpowers, right? In our world, that has a number of different ways to manifest. One of the more obvious ones is, is with NPCs or non-player characters that can show up with real personalities, trained in really interesting either topics or subjects or involving you in different uh, activities. Yesterday, I think it was, there was a demo that um, the CEO of NVIDIA put up, which was a big breakthrough, yeah. I feel, in that. NVIDIA is like, everyone's like recognizing yeah. no longer the sleeping giant, it's the yeah. giant, right? It was like real time AI created conversation yeah. in, a, in an NPC, something like yeah. that, right? Not, not so different than, I mean, every day there's something extraordinary and maybe the last extraordinary moment along that trajectory was when you could do it at all, which was like weeks ago already. But what happened yesterday was real time. So we're talking and if you even imperceptibly stop to think about what I'm saying, process it, go ask some people and then come back, even if it's like I'm just detecting that, it's gonna break the flow. We kind of know how these things need to go to have a real conversation, real time. Mm -hmm. So when you think about an NPC being able to come up to you and with the most simple example, of course, for the utility of business, and we, we, we focus a lot is uh, customer service knows everything 50 times better than anyone you could possibly train and your turnover is remarkably low of course when they can become conscious and they protest and they walk out that's but that's later right, <laughs> right now the turnover is remarkably low they will st stick in there with you and get better right and really learn your product and ideally learn some EQ to be able to handle different kinds of people differently in a way that makes them feel comfortable so that's, that's the simplest example. 
it's very obvious in education how we can start to use these, not only to teach, but to be taught. It's better to learn by teaching than by having information thrown at you. So if you can be given a pupil, given a student who then interacts with you, and in order for you maybe to get to the next level, you now have to work together, but that person, that AI, needs to gain certain amounts of knowledge that you have to impart, which you might not even know yourself yet, in order to get to the next level, that's gonna be a far more memorable communal experience than watching a video. Mm. And it gets really interesting from there. And as you start to look at what these characters can do, you can start to train in all sorts of things such as EQ type learning. What do you do if you have a, somebody learning a reservation system for a hotel, and what do you do about a cranky person online? Well, you can have a test. If a cranky person is online, do one of these three things, like a DMV test. What's the likelihood that that's gonna translate into something? But if you can simulate these experiences with actual characters that are running into different types of emotional responses and different ways of interacting with you, you can actually coach somebody to become better at so many things. English is a second language. I mean, it's obvious. Everyone knows who's learned a language that immersion is the best way to learn it. How do you get that without traveling somewhere and being immersed? Well, this will start to, start to simulate that a lot better. Now you combine those things with tokens for badging, for getting to the next level, with wallets to proving you have it, with teaching back, you start to get an entirely new ecosystem of opportunity for these technologies. The other thing that AI will be important for <clears throat> in our world is to help understand the user better so that you, you, everyone wants to deliver more personalized content and to be more relevant to somebody. AI is gonna be much better at that than, than even some of the more advanced, I would say, um, analytic engines that we have today. It's just getting better. And so that's gonna be uh, applied. The next thing that I think is really important, um, probably the most important in some ways for the advancement of humanity and our ability to find purpose is the superpowers it will bring to creativity. To continue watching the rest of the episode for free, visit our website, londonreal.tv, or click the link in the description below.